What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we're here today with the review for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 3, Episode 9, I believe it is. And the episode is titled Trouble in Paradise, you guys. All right, you guys. So before we get into this review, I before I even do my regular spiel that I do every video, today is a very, very special day. For, you know, it's a special day. I'm going to try my hardest to get through this and not cry, right? But today is a special day. If you guys have not watched any other video, you guys, and you don't know what's going on, today would have been my mother's 81st birthday. <clears throat> so I just want to take this moment to just say happy birthday to my mother, right? It has been four years since my mom passed away. And it doesn't get any easier. It really doesn't. Um, yeah, it just doesn't get any easier for me. But I do know that, you know, she's right here with me. And I just hope that she's proud of the, young, the, the man that I've become. And, yeah, she... I'm gonna I'm, I'm put a picture of my mom up here somewhere. Either on this side or this side, I don't know. But from how I'm looking at the camera, it looks like it'd be better to put the picture over here. So it's gonna be a picture of my mom. It might be, I think the picture that I'm thinking about, it'll be a picture of me and her together. <laughs> the picture is, a, it's old, very old, because it's a kid, picture of me as a kid. So, I think I'm about four or five in this picture that you guys are going to see. But yeah, that's, I'm going to show you guys a picture of my mother. And yeah, uh, happy birthday, mom. I hope you're, I hope you up there in heaven enjoying your day. I really hope so. I really miss you and I wish you were here with me, but you know, I wouldn't want you here in any kind of pain. So yeah. So happy, once again, happy birthday to my mother. So also, you guys, now before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then I just want you guys to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop any goes so you can stop taking me out on this date and have me pay for the date. Now, with that out the way, you guys, let's go ahead and talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville, shall we? All right, you guys, so we're still in Vegas, right? So we pick up where we last left off. And here's the thing that I'm so confused about when it comes to this Vegas thing, right? <clears throat> and it's not even Vegas. It's this argument that's ensued that's ensued between Kimmy and Maurice, right? Well, Kimmy, Maurice, and Tisha. I don't know in what context it's disrespectful to call someone sir or ma'am. I'm I'm thoroughly confused by that, right? Because they keep talking about the fact that Jalen kept referring to Tisha as ma'am I'm like how's that disrespectful right so you guys remember that Marceau was telling Kimmy that Kimmy can't ever see when Jalen is wrong <clears throat> and she's like I, <clears throat> excuse me y'all she's like I can always call you know I can always tell Jalen when he's wrong and she's like don't I Maurice and Maurice finally chimed in saying yeah she corrects him when he's wrong right Again, I, I still don't understand in what context sir or ma'am could ever be construed as disrespectful, right? And then for Tisha to say that she, you know, I'm not boss. And, you know, if this was anybody else, Jalen would have got fired for saying ma'am. For saying ma'am, you would fire somebody for calling you ma'am. Now, me personally, like I, I'll, people, when I go places to restaurant, you know, when I go to restaurants and people say, thank you, yes, sir. No, so I'm like, you do not have to say that. You Please don't call me sir, right? I don't like it because I'm not that old. I'll, I've always said that. I'm not that old for you to call me sir, right? Mm. But Tisha does apologize to Kimmy. Do I believe the apology? Semi. Um, semi. But even in my, in my notes, it actually says that that apology was bullshit. But I, I think... It was semi, I think it was, I think she meant it, but semi, she was just saying that to just smooth shit over. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. So then we see the next morning that they are all, you know, we see Tisha and Kimmy in the kitchen and they're making breakfast, right? And Marcel was down there. So Kimmy 
they all sit down to eat and Kimmy asks, is Mel coming, right? And nobody answers. So then Martell says, well, Mel told him she wasn't coming. So then they ask about Destiny and Maurice says to um, Martell, have you talked to Destiny? He says, yeah, every day. And here come that big forehead ass Tiffany. Oh, I thought they were talking about your baby mama. He says, no, nah, I talk to her every day. And I think she said, oh, for the kids? He says, I only got one kid. It's, it's a, my child. And she's like, oh, I was talking about Mel. Er, Scooby Duke balls. Say what? Did you call Mel the baby mama? I was so happy that Martel says, no, don't call her my baby mama. That's my ex-wife. Tiffany. Uh, this is why I don't like Tiffany, right? Tiffany says shit. But then when she gets confronted on the shit, she's gonna she's gonna backpedal and she's gonna cry. But this is why I don't like Tiffany. I really hope that we have a reunion for this season because Tiffany got a lot of shit to fucking answer for, right? Actually, she and her big goofy ass husband, um, Louis, got a lot of shit to answer for. Cause y'all are confess y'all are confessional gangsters. Y'all are really confessional gangsters. But in front of the group, y'all ain't got like when y'all get confronted on the shit. You shrink down to nothing. Like that was just disrespectful, right? Now, granted, I don't, I don't, you know, we. I mean, I don't even call Arian Curry, baby mama, because I, I, I'm trying to be, I try to be respect. Ugh, I don't even know. I try to be respectful of Arian Curry, but I won't even say Arian Curry is his baby mama. I, I just call her. Ugh, what do I call that woman? An idiot. That's all I can call Arian Curry. She is an idiot. Like, even, even, I don't even believe that Martell is even with this woman even after his divorce. Like, how do you allow yourself to be disrespected so badly? Now, I know Arian has gone on the, on the record saying that, you know, she knew about that phone call last season when she was on the phone, when she called him and they were filming. She knew about it. But even still, you put yourself in this position to look like a fucking idiot. Like you look stupid. Yeah, but like I said, I won't. I wouldn't call Arian a baby mama. I would be respectful and say the mother of his child. Right? That's the that's the more politically correct thing to say. The mother of his child, because that is what she is. Baby mama just has a negative stigmatism to it. So I was glad that Martel checked her and said, "Hey, that's my ex-wife." Be respectful. I'm going to move on, you guys. I wonder what Mel thinks about that. I need to go see if Mel tweeted about it. All right, you guys. Next up, Kimmy. Now, y'all know I love me some Kimmy, right? But, Kimmy, I got to call you out, love. Why are y'all trying to put Mel and Martell back together? Y'all can see that this is a toxic... This is toxic at this point. And there's no... At this point, there's no point of... You know, there's no clear path of reconciliation but Kimmy asked Martel you know how is he post divorce he says eh. but he's trying to you know they're trying to figure it out in my bad for burping the out face they're trying to figure it out so Kimmy asked him does he think that they'll ever get back together he says at this point he doesn't know you know because things are too fresh he says that you know Mel says things that upsets him but I'm like but you had a whole baby on her he says that like you had a whole baby with her right now there is one thing in this scene that Kimmy did say that I agreed with right if you're not satisfied if you're not fulfilled in your relationship that comes when you come you, one there are two things that you can do right there are two things that you can do the first thing that you can do is if you're not happy if you're not fulfilled in your relationship what you should then do is sit down with your partner talk to your partner express to your partner hey I don't like the, I don't like this. I don't like that. Can we do this? Can we change this? Can we do some different things? Like talk to your partner first. Now, once you talk to your partner, if your partner doesn't want to change things or spruce things, you know, change things, then it comes to a point where you say, "Well, I don't want to be in this marriage unhappy and not fulfilled, right?" And then that at that point, you say, "Maybe it's time that we go our separate ways instead of you going out and cheating." But hey, Maybe I, maybe, you know, I'm, I have, maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Let me know what you guys think, right? Oh, 
good God of God. Tiffany and Lewis. I'm really trying to figure out what is the significance of Tiffany and Lewis, right? Like, I just don't understand why we need a Tiffany and Lewis. I don't like a Tiffany and Lewis. I really don't like Tiffany and Lewis by extension, right? So Tiffany and Lewis, they call their sons and they talking about a damn haircut. I'm like, wait a minute, this whole scene was about a haircut? Girl, I could see it if the son was three years old, but he's not. He's a teenager. So I don't know if this was shade to Mel or Martell when she was talking about the fact that they, I guess they're both on good terms with their exes. So with them being out of town, their kids are with their exes. Congratulations. Do you, des- do you want a medal? Do you want a cookie? What you want, Tiffany? Let me know so I can not give it to you. I know, Carlos. I, you know, I know a lot of us don't like Tiffany. But if you guys ever look at Carlos King's, if you ever look at his tweets, right? Look at him. Look at his tweets. He always, he all after every show, right? When the show trends, he circles. He lets you guys know where it trended at on Twitter, right? He lets you know if, if Love and Marriage Huntsville, the hashtag tweeted, uh, trended. Mel tweet trended Martell and one and one episode I think what up I think it was the episode when they had Destiny's party right Tiffany trended and he likes that you know that 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 speaks to him right that lets him know good or bad she we're talking about her unfortunately so I, I'm pretty positive Tiffany is securing her spot for season four. God, please not. I don't want to look at her big forehead ass. I just don't like that woman. Now, actually, let's go back to, you know, I, I, want, to, I want to make something prevalent, right? So you guys remember, I just told you that Tiffany called Mel a baby mama, right? So if by your definition, because you said she has one, two, three, four of your kids. Well, Tiffany, by your own definition... Your ex-husband, you're his baby mama, huh? By your definition, you're your ex-husband's baby mama. Now, if you want to call yourself a baby mama, that's on you. I would highly implore women not to call themselves the baby mama. But hey, whatever. Do I want to pause? Not necessarily. But I think I am. All right, you guys, so we see everyone as they're getting ready to go out for the day, right? So Mel shows up, and Mel's voice, it's very high-pitched, right? And I even tweeted about this, Mel's voice, because I was tweeting about it before the show came on. I was like, is this the episode where Mel and Martell got into the argument with each other? Because her voice is, when she argues, her voice is... It goes up a higher octave and it's even more annoying than it normally is. So, man, like, she, so she makes it. She's like, where is she going to be sleeping at? You know, where am I going to be sleeping? You know, who's where, where's my roommate? I need to change my, I need to go put on my, um, I can't do her high pitched voice. But she needs to go put on her, you know, I got these heels on. But I, need, I got some tennis shoes to put on. So let me put on my tennis shoes. And they like, so she's, so she's asking where's her room. They said that they ran out of rooms, but she can bunk with Martel. I'm like, oh. Okay, whatever. So then Tisha, um, she comes back and Tisha asks her, how, you know, how do you feel about um, the trip right now and Martell being here? So Mel says, well, you know, I'm really surprised that Martell is on this trip. But, you know, since you guys, since, I mean, we're all friends with each other. But I did expect, I didn't really expect for him to come. But I kind of figured he would come. Mel, you knew he was coming. Y'all, I'm I'm pretty positive they give you guys a call sheet letting you know who's all going to be in the scene with you guys. But whatever. Well, let's just play like we don't know for the cameras. Uh, okay. So then we see them as they leave to get on the sprinter, right? So on one sprinter, it's the guys. On the other sprinter, it's the girls. On the girls' sprinter, Mel is talking about, you know, I just got back from finishing my video shoot. And, and they were like, do you have a, a clip that we can see? Sure, I, I do have a clip that you guys can see. Speaking of her song, um, I was just on Instagram before I came out here to record this video, and I saw that she had actually, as I was asleep last night, I looked at my phone because I I was woke I woke up at one o'clock because my cousin was out here arguing with his baby mama, 
damn it, I said baby mama. Arguing with the mother of his kid. Hell, I think that's who he was arguing with. Shit. Who the fuck was that nigga arguing with? Actually, I don't even call them I can't even call them baby mamas either. I call them dumb asses. You know what? We need to cut that out. Yep, we're gonna cut that out. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna put my family's business out there like that. Alright, you guys, so as they're getting ready to go out for the day, Mail shows up with her. I mean, Mail's voice is like very grating. I can't do the high pitchedness, but I can get the accent right because we're southern, so a southern accent is not really that hard to get. But you know, she shows up. You know, she's she's hugging everybody, and she gives Martel, you know, a little church hug pet, right? So she asks where's her room at, and they say that they ran out of room. So at this point, she's gonna have to sleep with you know, bunk with Martel. I would have been like, uh, hell no. I am not sleeping with Martel Hope at all. Like, there is just no way that I'm sleeping in a room with Martel Hope. But, you know, let me go change my shoes and I'll be right back. So, she does that. So, then Tisha, when she comes back, Tisha says, So, Mel, you know, how are you feeling about the trip and, you know, about Martel being here? So, Mel says, well, you know, with Martel, I did not expect Martel to come. But, you know, with you and Martel, y'all are friends with Martel. So, I did I didn't... She expected for him to come, but she didn't expect for him to come because they're friends. Mel, whatever. I know y'all get a call sheet, so miss me with the bullshit. So, um, we see them as they get on the sprinter. So, they split up. Guys on one sprinter, girls on the other. Ladies on the other sprinter, right? So, on the sprinter with the guys, Martel, they ask Martel who he's texting, right? And they they joke with him about the fact that he's joke texting Mel and they talk about the hug that he and Mel gave each other, right? On the other sprinter, Mel is telling all the ladies about, you know, I just finished my video shoot. And they were like, did you have a stand-in for Martel? She's like, yes, he was brown skin. He was something else. Something else. Uh, she described the man, right? So then, um, you know, Mel tells him that, you know, Martel and I right now, we're trying to be co-parents right now, but we cannot be friends with each other. Because I think somebody asked him if, she, if they could be friends. Hell to the fucking nah. So then on the other van, on the other sprinter, Marceau is talking about divorce. And, you know, how in marriages you have divorceable moments, right? I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you do have your divorceable moments in a marriage. But also when it comes to a marriage, I think it just depends on what that moment is. Like, people get, like, you can, you can have, people have small arguments with their spouses that blow up. And they, you know, they can blow up and then it, you could be like, oh, well, I'm going to file for a divorce and stuff like that, right? But when he was talking about it, I'm like, damn. The way you talk about Tisha sometimes, it's just like, fuck. And then he's talking about he stuck it out. I'm like, so you stand in your, so you've had these divorceable moments that are from, from how you talk, make it seem like they're bad, but you've stayed in your marriage for your kids. That's not a smart thing to do, people. Don't do that. Like, don't stand in a marriage for your kids because your kids can sense that negative energy, that toxic energy. The kids can sense it. So don't stay in a marriage just for your kids. Get out of it. Um, we can keep talking. So we see them as they're, so they're going to go, go, they're going to go do drive in the slingshots, right? And then Destiny pulls up on the group and the guy gave them all the rules for the slingshot. I'm like, damn, what can they not do? So they get in the slingshots. Actually, Martel was like, oh, well, Destiny and Mel can get in with me. They were like, huh? He was like, well, you know, you, he was talking about how Mel drives, right? He couldn't even get his big ass in that damn, um, that, that slingshot. He got the, he had the maneuver to get in there. I was looking at where they were. I'm like, oh my God, I wish when me and my cousins went to Vegas, I wish I knew about the slingshot. Because where they were at, it's literally right there on the strip it was right because we were standing at the Vene what were we did we say the venetian i believe we were at the Vene i can't remember i think we were at the venetian hotel right and because it's right there because they showed them in front of a dealers i'm like that is fashion show mall they look like fashion show mall i'm like man if i knew if we knew about the slingshot but i'm pretty sure it's got probably a hefty deposit if I go back to Vegas again, which I I plan to go back to Vegas sometime soon, I'm doing a slingshot. I'm doing a slingshot. But, I mean, 
But I, but thinking about it, they were driving with the top with, with no tops. I'm like, damn, I hope y'all got AC because when we were in Vegas, it was hot AF. Just hot as fuck. Um, let's move on, you guys. Alright, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the episode. So, I wonder how long were they in them slingshots, right? Because when they first started when they first started out on the slingshots, it was daylight. But then by the time they finished, it was nighttime. So Tisha is telling the group, you know, I feel like we should split up for the next day. You know, the girl, the ladies are going to be together and the guys are going to be together. So Tisha takes it upon herself to pull Maurice to the side. So, you know, with you and, and um, my husband uh, going out tomorrow, I just want you to keep an eye on him. I'm like, why? Like, Tisha, that just pr- you said you're not an insecure woman, but that proves your insecurity. If you want Maurice to watch your husband while they go out, that is what insecurity. And then you're talking about, you know, the women are, the women are looking at who? Not Marceau. Not being shady, but being a little shady. The women are not looking at your husband. Baby girl, you fine. You fine. So then he asked her, is that why y'all did that surprise therapy? She says, no. But you know, because uh, he's talking about they have a dope relationship. Really? Cool. Go off. She says, but you know, I feel like therapy helped with us because we've been having date nights. Okay, Tisha. Uh, I guess. If that's what you want to say. Girl, go off. Doesn't make a little bit, doesn't make sense to me, but hey. You know, I'm going to let Tisha have it. If that's how she feels, that's how she feels. So then, Mel. Now, I'm going to say, I'm gonna, I'm, I know y'all probably finna get mad at me, and, and I love you guys. But Mel and Martell, right? Martell is wrong for this situation with Mel, but Mel also has some fault, right? I can't really sit here and put it all on Martell, because I got to give a little bit to Mel. So Mel asked Martell, where are the kids? I'm like, so you don't know where your, you haven't talked to your kids? You don't know where your kids are? But Martell says the kids are with his mom, right? And she's like, but doesn't she have to work? He says she took off. So then she brings up her video shoot and that she talked to Brittany. Now this is where Martell was wrong because he called her video bullshit. And then he kept calling her Beyonce. I'm like, um, Beyonce, she is not, but okay. So Martell, so she says that you know she apologized to Brittany on behalf of both of them, and she was trying to she was trying to say whatever he said on that live that he did, which I don't remember. I saw the live, I didn't watch. I didn't. I saw it on face on not on Facebook. I saw it on Inks. Nope, I didn't see it on Instagram. I saw it on YouTube. I saw it on YouTube. I saw that live on YouTube. How did I see it? I believe my cousin texted to me. Because she texted me a lot of stuff about love and marriage in I'm pretty positive it was her. Cause I know I saw it on I know I saw it on YouTube, but that's neither here nor there, right? Um, he told her she's lying, and asked him what he said. Then she said that he was lying. Don't don't lie. So they start to argue with each other, and this is where I I was like, oh God, y'all know how Mel is when she gets upset and, and when she argues she she her voice goes up high like mini mouse and then she does she does the theatrics now martel was definitely wrong for the way he came at mel like i'm not gonna even sit here and hold you right martel was 1000 percent wrong for the way that he was talking to mel i did not like that but i gotta be honest with you guys at the same token mel is childish as hell mel could have Obvious, I'm pretty positive Mama Hope let Mel know she has the kids. I don't believe that that woman would, would have those kids and Melody not know where her kids are, right? I don't believe that. And for them both to say that, you know, the whole lying thing from both of them was out of line. Him calling her Beyonce, I don't know what that was, I don't know what that was supposed to do. I'm like, oh, you compare me to Beyonce? Thank you. I aspire to be like her one day, right? That is why Mel posted that picture of her and Beyonce at the um, Rock Nation brunch. 
I I kept trying to figure out because she posted it on her Instagram, and I kept trying to figure out. I, I saw that while I was at the nail shop yesterday, getting my, my manicure, my pedicure, and I kept trying to figure out like why is Mel posting this picture of her and Beyonce? It may and it makes sense watching it in this episode, right? Speaking of Mel, y'all did so she was on live late last night because I woke up at one o'clock in the morning, one twenty-six to be exact, because my phone went off. And she was on live. I'm like, what the fuck is she on live for? So I guess her video premiered on BT. So congratulations to her. Shout out to you, Tracy. You were right about that song and that video. The video is better than the song. And then Mel talking about she got a career. As a singer, Mel, I, 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 I don't know about that, love. I don't agree with that one. Yeah. Mel pulls out that, that vid, her phone and plays the song. Now, here's an issue that I do have, right? So, Martell is talking about the fact that, you know, Mel and the kids were going on around the house for two years singing the song. She says it is not that song. It's not Telltale Signs that it was actually this song called Down. Because it took me, I had, to re, I had to re-watch the episode again. I had to re-watch that part. Because someone on Twitter asked the question of, did she say that it was that song? So, what she actually said was... It was not Telltale Signs that it was another song called Down. But I'm pretty positive that the song is about him. Now, I don't have an issue with her. I don't have no issues with Mel writing songs about Martell. Write to your heart's content, right? Profit off your pain. I don't have a problem with that. The problem that I do have is the fact that these kids know the song. Now, she says that the kids don't know what the song is about. But I'm like, Mel, those kids are smart. Like your oldest daughter, right? Your daughter's the oldest, right? And she looks like she's old enough to where she can get on, on on her phone and Google the song. And I'm pretty sure if she Googles that song and Googles what's going on with her dad, that she can put two and two together. So I just don't think that that's a good thing, right? I just don't like that the kids are being involved in this. But hey, let me know what you guys think about that. And um, I'm done with this stuff. I'm done with Love and Marriage Johnson, but that's it. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else and share the video. And so the next time, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance, be blessed. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.